Hi, my name is Vincent. I'm a machine learning engineer over at Explosion and one of the core developers behind Prodigy. I'm happy to announce that we just released version 1.13 that adds support for Spacey LLM. In short, that means that you can now easily configure powerful LLM pipelines to help you annotate. And this also allows you to pick different providers. You can go for OpenAI, Cohere, or any of the third parties that are hosted in the cloud. But we also support you to run some of these LLMs locally yourself. The goal of this video is to just give a quick demo of how you might be able to use this feature. And the way that I'll do that is just by showing you how you can run this yourself locally with a new version of Prodigy. So I am inside of Visual Studio Code right now, uh, and I have some texts over here uh, that all have to do with cooking and ingredients. The end goal that I have in mind here is that I want to detect some named entities in this text, and I would like to use an LLM to help me do this. Now, these large language models that I'll be using won't necessarily be perfect, so I will still want to annotate some data in the loop here. But before showing all of that, uh, I do think it might be good to just spend a few minutes explaining uh, how Spacey might interact with a large language model uh, to help you annotate. So the setup effectively is like this. We have a text example, let's say, and we can use that text example in a prompt. So we could come up with some sort of long bit of text where we describe a task for a large language model uh, that then uses this text uh, somewhere inside of it. This would then go to a uh, large language model. This can be a model that's on disk, but it can also be a model that's uh, out there in the cloud somewhere. And this would give us a response. And this response would typically also just be uh, plain text, uh, hopefully in some sort of format uh, that the prompt here uh, was able to ask for. So, so far so good. But usually you're not interested in turning text into more text. The goal here is to turn text into something that's a little bit more structured. So this is where Spacey LLM kind of comes in. The final goal here is to have a document with structured data inside of it that will have tokens as well as the entities that we are interested in. And the whole goal of Spacey LLM is to take care of this part. Spacey LLM will require you to configure the backend that you're talking to, as well as some specifics to generate the appropriate prompt. But the whole point of Spacey LLM is that you can easily configure a system that can accept text, but can still output uh, structured information, because usually that's what you're interested in. From here, though, Prodigy now also has a direct integration with Spacey LLM, which means that you can use these large language models to help you annotate new data that's coming in. So next, what I would like to do is just give you a quick demo of this. And I'll start just by giving a very brief demo of Spacey LLM directly uh, before I move on to the integration with Prodigy. To use Spacey LLM, you will need to make a configuration file. I have one here called config.config, and it has the required properties for the task at hand. We're going to be configuring a NLP object of sorts. We will need to provide it with a language because that way Spacey can pick the right tokenizer. But then we are basically saying there's a pipeline and that pipeline has one component and the name of that component is LLM. You could pick any name here, but I think LLM is nice and consistent. And then you need to configure a few things. The component needs a factory. So by default, you would typically provide this. But after that, you're going to have to configure a task, so to say. And the task can be seen as the mechanism that generates the prompt and can then also parse the required information back from the response. In this case, because I'm interested in named entity recognition, I'm going to be using the Spacey NER task that's predefined. There are lots of tasks inside of Spacey LLM that you can go ahead and use. The docs will definitely give you more information. But for now, just to configure a basic NER detection mechanism, I'm going to say that this is the task that I need. And from here, I can also say, well, there's a dish, an ingredient, and some equipment. And these are the labels that I would like to detect. From here, Spacey LLM can generate this zero shot prompt on my behalf. And the next thing I got to configure is where to send this prompt to. In this configuration file, I'm just going to send it to OpenAI by using this GPT-3.5 endpoint. But just like Spacey LLM has many tasks, uh, it also has lots of models to pick from. Some integrations are directly configurable, like so. Other integrations go through Langchain. The documentation gives you all the options. But the main thing that's important to know is that we definitely provide some providers directly, and a lot of them are also models that you can run locally. 
So if you have a strict requirement that data cannot leave your server, Spacey LLM is something that you can configure for that use case. Now, at this point, I've got my configuration file, which means that I could go ahead and take it for a spin, which I'm doing inside of this Python file over here. Now, because I am using the OpenAI endpoint, I will need to have some environment variables that can identify me as a user. I've saved these environment variables in this .n file over here. And to make sure that those keys are around, I am calling load.env at the start of the script. After that, I'm running this assemble function, which comes from the spacey LLM util library. Effectively, you can give it a configuration file that's local on disk, and then this assemble function will do everything you need to get it to generate a spacey pipeline that then behaves as you would expect normally. It's just that the backend will now go through a prompt to open AI and back. So that means that I can use it as a normal spacey pipeline. I can give it some text and I can ask it to uh, print a document and any of the identified entities. And just to run that, you can see that indeed pizza is being detected as a dish and anchovies is being detected as a ingredient. This is a basic demo of spacey LLM. It's using LLMs in the back end, but the experience is very much like a normal spacey pipeline. And that also means that we can make a relatively easy integration for Prodigy, which is what we've done for the new spacey LLM features. So let's show that now. So in my terminal, what I've got here is a call to the new NER LLM correct recipe. This recipe needs a data set to store annotations into. It also needs a configuration file, uh, which is the config file that you saw earlier. And you need to pass it some examples to annotate. This correct recipe will now run spacey LLM as a model in the loop to help you annotate. Uh, so let's just see what that looks like. When you run this recipe, you will see this interface over here. And you can see that there are a couple of things pre-highlighted. So spacey LLM has detected that pizza is probably a dish and that anchovies is an ingredient. From this interface, you can also see the prompt that was sent to the LLM. So you can actually see what text got generated as a task. And from here, you can also see what the response from the LLM was. And hopefully from looking at this, you are able to see how this prompt got generated, but also how this uh, response got uh, parsed. And that's all information that Spacey can then put in the structure, which Prodigy can then render on our behalf. In this case though, I would say the model did a bang up job. So I will go ahead and hit accept for this one. This one also looks pretty good. So well done there. But here it seems to have made a mistake. The LLM seems to think that anodized aluminum is a ingredient and that pan is some sort of equipment. That's almost there, but this will be one of those moments where I think I can make an improvement. This looks a whole lot better. So I could go ahead and hit accept over here. However, at the same time, this is also a really good time to just pay attention because if I spot a mistake that the model makes, then it's also an opportunity for me to make the prompt bigger. What Spacey LLM allows you to do is add some of these examples that the model got wrong as part of the prompt. And in doing so, you'll add a little bit more context, which the large language model can then use to make better predictions. So as a next step, I figured it would be good to configure this. And in doing so, I might also show you some extra features that Spacey LLM can provide. So I'm back in Visual Studio Code and I have made some additions to my config file. I still use the same LLM task as before. I still have these labels, but besides defining just these tasks, I have also added some label definitions. And that allows me for every single label to just add a little bit more context to the prompt. Typically you can describe what the label means here. That way the prompt will have just more than a single word to understand what the label is about. But this is also a great place where you can describe what you are interested in and also what you're not interested in being associated with this label. So that's something that I've added and in general that will make the prompt just a little bit better. Next, I have also done something new when it comes to the examples. The task that I have over here is able to accept a couple of examples that will also be added to the prompt. And to pass those along, uh, you can refer to a YAML file or a JSON file that has uh, examples in the appropriate format. So for example, the sentence that we just got wrong earlier, uh, that's an example that I've added over here. 
Uh, and you can see that I can specify that there is one and only one entity and that it refers to this uh, substring uh, over here. And by configuring this, uh, we now actually get some examples that also get added to the prompt, which will again add more context, which will again allow the LLM uh, to hopefully make a better prediction. There is also another thing that I've added to this config file that I do think is good to mention. And that is this cache here at the bottom. In general, when you're using an LLM, you will notice that it takes some time before you get the prediction back. It's also possible that you might be making costs on each request that you're making to the LLM. To prevent a lot of unnecessary waiting and costs from accumulating, uh, what we've added is this cache such that when we get the response back, we actually just store the document on disk. If we then see the same text example with the same prompt, then we don't have to call the large language model again. We can just load the predictions from disk instead. And that can save a whole lot of compute time. So with all of that configured, uh, let's now just rerun this uh, recipe one more time. So I'm back in my annotation interface over here. And one thing that I can do just to show the effect uh, of the config file is I can inspect this prompt one more time. And what you can see now is that the label definitions make an appearance in this prompt. And if you scroll down, you will also see just some examples. Here's that anodized aluminum pan example again. Then finally, at the end, it gives me the text that needs labeling. But this is the confirmation that indeed the prompt has gotten a fair bit longer. Now, in general, a longer prompt means more accuracy, but it typically also means more compute time or more costs. And that's something to always keep in the back of your mind. I have just given a demo of the NER LLM correct recipe that allows you to use a LLM in the loop to annotate examples that you can then correct and curate. However, it is also good to know that there is a fetch variant of the same recipe. This recipe doesn't allow you to annotate an example one by one, but it will instead actually be able to download a bunch of data in bulk. It works pretty much in the same way, the main difference is that it just downloads a file on disk that you could then use with some other Prodigy recipes. Besides NER, we also have recipes for text classification. The configuration is a little bit different because we're talking about a classification use case here, but the big picture is still pretty much the same. Also here, you can use a large language model to help you annotate and curate. Also for this recipe, there is a fetch variant that allows you to download examples ahead of time. But something that's relatively new as well is that we've also added support for SpanCat classification. This is very similar to named entity recognition. The main difference, though, is that you can now also get models annotating data that contain nested spans. So if that's a use case that you're interested in, that's also something that we have recipes for right now. If you want to learn more about these recipes, do check out this large section on large language models on the docs because this guide goes into a fair amount of depth to explain what's happening under the hood. Now, a final thing that is worth mentioning is that in version 1.12, we added very similar recipes that integrate with OpenAI. And many of the recipes that I've shown you here today are very similar, but instead of interfacing with OpenAI, we've chosen to have these interfaces work via Spacey LLM instead. Spacey LLM is easier to configure, we have more backends that we support, and it also allows us to have a suite of prompts for different tasks available, which makes it much easier for you to integrate Spacey together with your own custom Prodigy recipes as well. On the long term, we also expect the OpenAI recipes to go away, partially because OpenAI has announced some deprecations. This is also a benefit of using Spacey LLM, because we can support many different backends, which also means that if one backend were to get dropped, you can easily switch to another one. We hope that you're excited about these new features, but if you have any questions or comments, be sure to find us over at the Prodigy support forum. You can talk to me or some of the other contributors to the project here, and we'd love to get feedback on these new features. Thanks for listening.